Okay, I need some help. Um, let me start with a, an obvious uh, admission here. Um, I understand that on a IQ scale that has Forrest Gump on one end of it and Albert Einstein on the other end of it, that if I'm lucky and on a good day, I probably land somewhere in the middle. Uh, but I probably land closer to the Forrest Gump side than I'd like to admit. So perhaps this quote by Stephen Hawking that has me so baffled and confused and thinking it absurd, thinking it's self-refuting and laughable, is simply explained by the fact that there's a huge disparity between my IQ and his. Um, but I'm not completely convinced of that, and I, I, I need your help. Whether you're smarter than me and Christian, or whether you're smarter than me and atheist, um, I'd like to read a quote to you to help have you help me understand it. This quote has been taken out of Stephen's new book that I have not read, have no plans to read. Perhaps that's lazy of me. I'm just really not that interested in it. The only reason this quote catches my eye and um, is of interest is because several channels on YouTube have been spouting it as if it's gospel, and it's so absurd and shocking to me um, that I, I just had to analyze it on my own computer screen and see if what I thought I was hearing is truly as absurd as it actually is, and I think it is. So let me read without further ado. This Because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Spontaneous creation is the reason there is something rather than nothing, why the universe exists, why we exist. It is not necessary to invoke God to light the blue touch paper and set the universe going. We have three total sentences here. And really, of the three, I only have a problem with sentence one. Sentence two and three uh, merely support his initial statement, but his initial statement is absurd in my mind. Um, let's start with sentence three, just so we can go through these um, in order, uh, in backwards order, uh, leading up to the most absurd original statement. When he says it's not necessary to invoke God to like the blue touch paper, other than the fact that he uniquely uses the phrase blue touch paper here, this is a very common atheist uh, point of view. I've heard multiple times on multiple occasions that they don't find it necessary to invoke a deity uh, for explanatory power on the origins of our universe uh, or the origins of our existence. So he's doing nothing new here other than phrasing it in a unique way, and this is very consistent with his worldview. In sentence two, um, where, what I'll do here is give him credit for admitting something that most often when I discuss this topic with atheists, they try their best to do gymnastics around and try not to admit. Theists very often accuse atheists that they believe that something comes from nothing. They really don't like hearing that because it sounds very absurd even in their own ears. And so they dance around that topic quite a bit and try to tell me that I just don't understand how everything works. So I have to give Hawking credit here. He admits, and this is also consistent with his worldview, that he believes something comes from nothing. Um, so we're left with the original statement and the self-refuting statement as far as I can assess it to be and it's it reread here it says because there is a law such as gravity the universe can and will create itself from nothing it seems to me that this statement admits that at one point there was nothing 
absolutely nothing. Um, Christians like myself would argue God always was. There was never a point which nothing existed. God created everything. He's always been around. He admits that he believes there was actually nothing at one point. But in this very sentence, he admits that gravity somehow is there. He says, because there's a law such as gravity, which how that exists when there's nothing, I don't know. Um, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. That's self-refuting. In the very first half of this sentence before the comma, he's admitting there's something. And in the second half of this sentence after the comma, he's admitting that that something helps nothing create things. Now, perhaps this is just a case of a poorly worded sentence. And it is Hawking's contention that the universal constant isn't God. It is gravity, and that gravity has always existed and always will exist. In which case, I can accept that, even though it opens up a whole new can of worms and questions, like why does he think gravity, of all the laws of, of nature that we see, uh, why is that the one that preceded everything and, and that exists infinitely and eternally? And why is that one the most powerful one that can actually be creative and why don't we see gravity um, necessarily creating other new things out of nothing uh, but I digress because we're not even there yet I, I don't know that Hawking is trying to say because it's not clear by this quote that everybody seems to think is great it's not clear that he's saying gravity is the first cause and that it's technically the creative force um, or that it's eternal and infinite and preceded everything it seems here that somehow gravity just pops into existence and helps the nothingness spontaneously create things like the universe and us I cannot be the only person that thinks this is absurd and I'm open to the idea that my IQ just can't handle his IQ so if that's the case Please show me. Thanks for your time.